All right, so now we're going to work on the block. I'm going to clean down the main journals on the block so that I can install the main bearings. Then I can check to see if the clearances are correct with the new size bearing and with the crankshaft being cut. Oh, crap. These are the wrong bearings for the block. These are for the main caps girdle. Now I can install the main bearings into the block. Now you can only install these one way because they have a little notch on them and an oil hole. When you're putting these in, just make sure that there's no lint dust or anything that would be behind the bearing causing it to push more pressure onto the crank. Now I'm going to take the crank out of the bag and put it into the block so I can check the clearances. The crank is already really clean and I haven't taken it out since I got it. So I went ahead and sprayed it down with some brake parts cleaner and aired it off. Wiped it down with some blue towels, then aired it off. Now I can put the crankshaft into the engine block. This is kind of heavy and you want to just make sure you put it down nice and slow and easy so you don't damage anything. Now I gotta make sure that I get the right clearances here. So you'll see that the crankshaft journal oil clearance on this engine is 0 .00082 0 .0020. So I just have to make sure that the clearance range on the plastic gauge is the same. So I'll be using these two lines to make sure that they're within here and they'll be within spec. Now I wanna turn the crank so that I have a good flat surface to work with. Now I'm using a bigger piece of the plastic gauge and then I'm cutting it and letting it drop onto the crankshaft on each journal. Now that I got them on each individual journal, I'm going to put down and then I'm using the razor blade to just kind of move it into the center of the bearing. Now that I have them on each individual journal, I can put on the main bearing cap girdle. Now I just got to check the book to make sure that I get the right torque spec. Now for the torque on these, it's 18 foot-pounds plus an additional quarter churn. I hate doing quarter churns because I'm never feeling like I'm 100% accurate. Now I'm going to use my brand new Tecton torque wrench to torque these down. Now I just gotta wait till it clicks and then turn it an additional quarter turn. So that would be 90 degrees. And 90 degrees. It clicked, now turn it 90 degrees. It clicked, now turn it 90 degrees. It clicked now, turn it click now, turn it 90 degrees. It clicked 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 now, turn it 90 degrees. All right, now I can loosen all of these. Loosen this one, 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 loosen this one. Loosen this one, loosen this one. Now this won't just come off by hand for some reason. I always have to pry it off a little bit. So be gentle so that you don't push the plastic gauge and ruin your reading. Now you can tell that I'm right between the point zero zero one five and the point zero zero two zero, which means that it's on a little bit of the wider side of the range seeing as the widest I can go is 0 0.0020, but it's actually almost closer to 0 0.01. Now this one is about the same. It's right on that green line. All right, now I'm going to clean each one of the journals. All right, so I got it all done, and now I just got to use my finger to cut all of this stuff off. I'm just going to use my finger. 
for a really long time and collect clean this off and use my finger finger. Yep, it feels really good underneath my fingernails. I don't know if you've ever done this. Okay, I'm just going to use a rag because that would actually properly remove it. So I did put a little bit of brake cleaner on the end of there. And I'll probably clean it a little bit extra off camera. Alright, so it's my wife's that time a month. Now I can put down the crankshaft onto the red slick. Now I'm going to put down the main bearing cap girdle. I'm going to tighten it down and then torque it down to the proper spec. I'm going to tighten it down and torque it to 18 foot-pounds and plus a corner turn. So I used the torque wrench to get them all down to the proper spec and then I used a breaker bar to do the quarter turn because I felt like it was more accurate. I still suggest going to the parts store and getting a torque angle adapter that goes in between your breaker bar and your socket to show you what degree you are turning to. As you can tell on the engine stand, this is a big pain in the butt, and it's a good idea to try to find a way to brace the engine stand from moving. Now you can see that I got all the pistons and rods all cleaned up and ready to go back in the engine. Some of them still have some heavy damage, but they should be okay for the certain power levels I'm looking to do. Now you want to make sure you clean off the pistons really well so you don't have any extra dirt or any extra particles stuck in the rings. And now you want to get out one of the top rings, one of the middle rings, and then for the oil rings, it makes up three parts. You can look at the instructions just in case, make sure that you know you're doing everything the same way that they want you to. On the left here they have all of the types of grooves to show you which way the piston ring goes up or down but I'm done with these you can tell which one which ring is which by if it fits in the groove or not if it doesn't fit in the groove it's most likely going to be the bigger ring on the bottom but it's a lot easier just to put on these rings first so I always put on this scrunchy style oil ring and then I put on the lower oil rings. These are really super easy to move so you can just put these on by hand but just make sure that you're not abusing them too much because they can break.
Now, I was worried that if I put these on by hand, that it's a potential that I'm possibly losing the rigidity or possibly losing the reliability in some way, but I figured this is a good way to find out. Now, I forgot to do one thing, and that was to check to make sure that the piston ring in clearance is correct. Otherwise, you would have to shave them down. Now, you want to use a piston and just put it down into the cylinder bore, pushing the ring so that it's a flat all the way around. Make sure that there's enough end gap. And then you want to use a .0015 on the outside of the ring to make sure that the piston wall clearance is correct. If it's pulling it up, it means it's a little tight. Probably isn't a horrible thing. As far as the end gap, the end gap does seem good. It just seems tight. Seems like it's there though, usable. Now as far as testing the next ring down. Do the same thing with the piston and just push it into the cylinder wall, making sure it's level. Making sure it's level. I used the sides of the ring gaps to see if it was the same all the way around. Just slide in the two feeler gauges. Perfect. Now we can go back to putting back the piston rings. Now trying to put on the bottom ring first, it wants to go in the top ring groove. So I just kind of have to move it down one more groove, but I didn't want to force it all the way down there because it might break the ring. Sorry, I am not able to stare at the screen, so it goes out of the picture just a little bit here. All right, and I was able to move that ring all the way down, but I'm gonna try to use a screwdriver to properly move it around. So the first thing I wanna do is use a bunch of automatic transmission fluid to clean the cylinder walls out. So I just put a little bit in this cap and then I'm running it around the cylinder walls, using it kinda of like a cleaner. Automatic transmission fluid has certain detergents in it that could help clean out the cylinder walls. Once it's cleaned out, I'm going to use this STP oil treatment. It is very super slimy and sticky, so it'll be perfect for the cylinders when they first fire up. So I'm just going to use my hand here because it kind of feels kind of cool. And I'm just going to rub it all the way up and down the cylinder walls. And I'm just going to, you know, get it all nice and lubricated here so I can put them pistons in without a problem. A uh, little bit on the top of the cylinder. I mean, I'm going to have to wipe this again later anyways, but I'll get some off now. Cool, now it's rod bearing time. So now I'm gonna be putting the rod bearing into the rod first, and then I'll put it into the rod cap. Putting it in there, you just wanna pop it in there. Don't force it, obviously, it'll go in. And it just kinda takes a little bit of pressure because they have to kind of collapse the bearing so it holds itself in there. Now I just got to put the bearing into the cap. Now when you're putting the cap back on, a lot of times I'll mark them on the end so that I know which end it goes on so I don't have to guess. But if you try to put it on the wrong way, the way that they break the rod, like the rod is in a perfect gap or a perfect flat surface there, 
it's actually like a broken piece of metal. So if you put it on the wrong way, it'll actually show you by not fully collapsing together. Also, you won't be able to put the bearings together. You'll notice that they're in the wrong locations. Now I'm going to put in the piston. So while I'm putting the piston in, I'm going to try not to let the connecting rod dangle and hit back and forth against the cylinder wall or against the crank. I'm going to put this here. Now I'm just going to lube up these piston rings by hand, just getting a bunch of them all the way around. As I do this, it keeps moving all the piston rings around too. So I'm not even going to bother clocking it until I'm done with all the lubrication. This stuff is really slimy, so you just kind of have to keep moving your finger around and it'll keep following. I'm just going to rub it all around the side skirt and everything so it's all down the piston wall. Now I just make sure that the piston rings are clocked to 180 of each other. Now I'm going to compress this piston rings so that I can tap the piston into the cylinder. When I'm tapping the piston down into the cylinder though, I want to make sure that I'm holding the piston ring compressor flat against the block so that it doesn't allow any rings to go in between it and the block. Because then whenever you go to hit the hammer, you might break a piston ring. Sometimes if you just tap with your hand, it's easy. This is the moment that you really want to make sure the crankshaft is completely centered so that while the rod is dangling, it doesn't hit the crankshaft journal. Flipped over the block, and now I can just guide the piston rod up into place, and now I can put on the journal with some plastic gauge. Plastic gauge worked out. It's just the proper spec, just like the main bearings were. Now I'm just going to peel this off with my hand and then clean it up with some brake parts cleaner and a paper towel. So now that it's cleaned up, I'm going to push the piston rod down so that I can put some red slick on it. Now I can slowly pull up the piston rod. It is a little bit difficult because there's not a lot of leverage. Now that the piston rod is pulled up into place, I can put the rod bearing cap on, just making sure it's in the same orientation that it's supposed to be. and I put on the Ron Baron cap nuts. Now I just torque these down to the proper spec. And I just have to do the other cylinders. Here's a time lapse of me doing one of the others. And that's it for this episode. Please subscribe for more episodes. And turn on the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when I upload a video. Comment down below if you like or dislike my content. And if you have any suggestions. Thank you again for watching. Have a great night. And if I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good night.